Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So today I just wanted to do a video. Um, I like to do this every now and then. You know, I constantly get new people coming over and checking out the channel. And, you know, one of the first questions that people will ask when they think about black Brazilians is what is it like to be black in Brazil? I mean, whatever, if you're black and you're from a, a country outside of Brazil, um, where whatever country you might be in and you hear about the situation in Brazil, you might wonder, well, what's it like? Just, you know, uh, how do, what's the black experience in Brazil? So, you know, I have a couple hundred videos on the channel now, and I always say there's at least 3,600 articles on the BlackBrazilToday.com blog. Now, uh, while I'm talking about that, I want to mention this. I'm going to have to go back to posting stuff on that blog because quite a few of you have expressed interest in being able to read the material on the blog. And I'll tell you the truth, I hadn't updated the blog in a while. Um, so I'm going to have to get back to that because, you know, when I check the stats over there, I said, you know, it's not booming over there, but people still come over to the blog, you know, and check out some of that material. So I definitely, um, I, I appreciate people and all of the comments that you make. I have to take into consideration a lot of things you guys say, you know, some of the things that people point out, you know, gives me ideas for other shows. So I definitely, I want to put it out there. If there's something you want me to cover and it has something to do with black Brazilians or the racial issue in Brazil, definitely uh, drop it in the comment section. Definitely. Um, before I even get into this video, consider liking this video, sharing this video with, you know, with other people, you know, uh, subscribing to the channel and clicking on the notification bell. So let me just get directly into the video today because there's a lot I'm, I'm probably going to make this into a two part video because I know a lot of people don't really have the I don't know, the the attention, the attention span to watch 30 and 40 minute videos. And sometimes my videos can get kind of long. So that's what you know, sometimes I feel like I need to cut them, do a part one and part two, which is what I'm going to probably do here. Um, so today I'm talking about there's a lot of really good Instagram channels on Instagram that I really like to follow. And what I really dig about what black Brazilians are doing with their videos these days is that they cover a lot of material that I've talked about on the blog over the, you know, however many years I've been on that blog since 2011. Um, and they also give me ideas for topics I need to cover. They also, this has happened numerous times over the last couple of months, you know, black Brazilian Instagram profiles are covering videos that I have in my archive. Like, you know, I, I started to do an article and I just never got around to putting it on video. And then I see somebody else doing it. I'm like, OK, I definitely need to talk about that. It's, it's, I'm, I'm loving what's going on on Instagram right now. Um, I'm going to be moving into that more in the future because it's, it's just you never run out of content, <laughs> you know, in the YouTube space. So what is it like being black in Brazil? Afro-Brazilians share their experiences. So the first thing I want to mention here is. When I saw what the content was on this particular Inst Instagram page that I like to follow, I saw what she was saying and I saw what people, uh, the comments that she was sharing on that particular post. And I always like to be, I, I want to be careful about how things are presented because people can come around, come away with, the, with a bad idea. You know, a lot of people are asked, well, why do you talk so much about just racism or racial issues? In Brazil, why can't you talk about this or talk about that? I'm saying, well, this is what I choose to talk about. You know, if you want to talk about Brazilian food or Brazilian liquor or Brazilian sports, then, you know, there's other, you know, content makers out there that, that talk about these things. You come to my channel. I'm talking about the, the issue of the experience of black Brazilians, you know, what it has to do with their identity, racism, um, achievements of black Brazilians. A lot of things I like to cover here. So. Before I get into today, that's what I wanted to say. I wanted to mix it up a little bit because the the post that I saw is mostly talking about black Brazilians and how they deal with everyday just comments and gestures that people make in Brazilian society, you know, in terms of black people. And it, sometimes it's just not a good thing, but I don't want to show just the one side. So I'm trying to mix it up a little bit. But anyway, for if, if you're not for me to situation in Brazil. Just listen to what some of the things some of these people have to say. So let me get directly into the video for now. So it says, Como es ser negro no Brasil? Apparently, this is like a, a documentary or a series that's on YouTube by Lucas, Ping, Ping, uh, Lucas Pisanya 
and Giovanna Nascimento. I haven't checked it out yet, but I, I like the picture. So that's what I'm saying. What's it like being black in Brazil? Afro Brazilians share their experiences. So I want to talk about the image of black Brazilians. When people think about black Brazilians, what comes to mind? You know, it might be the the whole the Gisamba. You got a big group of people, you know, a crowd, you know, drinking, eating, and singing along to a group of samba musicians, like in this picture right here. You might think of capoeira like this right here. You might think of people who worship the Candomblé religion or follow the Candomblé religion. I just did a two-part series on that. Um, how do you define what it means to be Black in Brazil? Some people use their experiences with Brazilian society to talk about the challenges that they have being Black in Brazil. Um, the This particular question what is it to be black in brazil a lot of times people will talk about just what it is just their experiences being in brazil um and then other times you have people who go directly into just racist incidents or racist comments that people have said to them that speaks on being black in brazil and this is another thing i said i don't want to focus too much on the negative stuff because a lot of the things that people said in this particular instagram post tended to be a little bit more on the negative side so i want to feature some of the success stories as well so let's talk a little bit about that. I just talked about the whole de Samba. If you've been to Brazil, you it's something you have to experience, you know, whether you drink beer or caipirinha or, you know, you might have, a, you, you know, like a beans and rice. You go to one of these Samba circles and you're going to get a real feel of uh, just Brazilian culture. OK, Capoeira, a lot of people familiar with that. A lot of people are familiar with Condom Black. And I, this takes me back some years where there was this brother that I knew from Salvador Bahia. And he's a he's really a, a great entrepreneur, uh, Rogerio Nunes. And he was participating in a, a black journalist. Uh, I, I forget which every year there's like a black journalism. It's like an event. I'm not sure if it goes on in the same place every year, but it's for black professional journalists. And he was in the States at that time and he participated. He called me and said if I could create some flyers for him for the event. And, you know, I, when I think a lot of people think of Brazil, they think of capoeira. They think of football, you know, what they call soccer. Some people think of uh, capoeira. And he told me, he was like, Mark, I don't want to present that image of black Brazilians anymore. You know, a lot of tourists, that's all they think of when they think of black Brazilians. We're we want to change our image. You know, we're successful business people. Um, a lot of people, you know, they're like micro entrepreneurs, you know, you see people moving up in entertainment, in the media and journalism. And he was like, you know, we just want to change the image of what the black Brazilian is. And I agree with him. So I put together another flyer. But the flip side of this, this is there's always another a negative side like this sign right here. I've talked about what some people define as the genocide of black Brazilians, because you constantly see black Brazilians being killed, you know, in violent methods. So this sign right here, Brazil kills 82 young people per day. 77% of them are black. Can't get around that. But then on the other hand, you've got some incredible success stories. This is uh, Hachelle Maya. She's one of the 500 most influential people in Latin America. Some years ago, a study came out that says like 0.01% of CEOs in Brazil were black women. And as it turned out, she was the only black woman CEO of a, like a top 500 uh the top 500 brazilian uh companies in the country she, that 0.01 percent rip was her only her like okay where are the rest of the black women who are ceos um this is um chiago chiaguinho he's a popular pagogi samba singer but it, he became bigger as a businessman he started his own little music company in brazil and he is said to be brazil's first black billionaire now, of course, if that's in hay eyes and is, uh, is, as far as I know, that one dollar is still worth five hay eyes. So he may not be a billionaire in terms of, of dollars, but he is definitely a billionaire in Brazilian hay eyes. That's a huge success story. Um, you have Joaquin Barboza, who became the first black president of Brazil's uh, Supreme Court. Now, we'll say first black president in the modern era, because a lot of historians point out that there were two men who came before him. But in the modern era, he's the first black man to become the head of Brazil's Supreme Court. Uh, so Joaquin Barbosa, this was some years ago. I think he came into office. I think he says it's, it's November of 2012. He stepped down some years ago, but he still made history. Then, it, you know, speaking to what, what my friend told me, you know, you look at 
Forbes magazine has its own Brazil edition. This is an article that's talking about the, the, the it's a special on black innovators, 19 professionals here. They're in all different areas of the economy. You know, these are just some of the people, Leila Luz. This is Carlos Eduardo da Silva, or Electro Luz. These are the companies that he works for. Camila Maciel Cardozo of the group Heineken. I believe, you know, it's a Heineken, the beer group. Um, let's see, uh, Moises uh, Nascimento of Itaú Bank. So, you know, these people are making headways in the business world. So, you know, people want to change the image of what's going on with Black Brazilians because we've seen the ascension of Black Brazilians in, in record numbers, you know, in the last, particularly in the last 10 to 15 years. You just didn't see as many Black Brazilians, you know, in these prominent roles. You just, before, I like the last decade and a half, you just didn't see that many, that so many magazines and websites are talking about these people, okay? What else do we have here? This is um, what is her name? I think her name is Sonia Guimarães. She was the first Black Brazilian woman to have a PhD in physics. Some could say, "Wow, it took a long time for that." You know, it is, I'm hoping there's more after her. But I met her some years ago, and she it was funny because she didn't realize that about herself until she actually read my blog. She discovered she was the first Black woman to get a, a PhD in physics. She actually learned it from the Black Brazil Today. Uh, blog. So that was really something when I heard that. So with that said, I'm going to move into this particular uh, IG page, uh, Negatitude in Letras. I, I love her her channel, her uh, her Instagram page. I check it out almost every day. So this was she just gathered. This is something that I often do myself, just gather a lot of comments that people are making and make a, a video out of it. So what is it to be a black person in Brazil? This is called this, the name of this this particular post is racismo a brasileira, meaning Brazilian style racism. And so the 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 young lady whose 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 Instagram channel I, I took this from it says uh this is her speaking. She says many people think that racial violence is limited to verbal insults, but that's not the case. In these stories in which I preserve the anonymity of the authors, we see different situations that illustrate Brazilian racism. Unfortunately, there are still those who believe that my approach to racial inequality is the result of militancy, extremism, exaggeration, political bias, or simply because I'm black. However, this is, in fact, a problem that needs to be tackled by society as a whole. So these are some of the comments that she took. You know, just pay attention to some of these comments. These are just everyday black Brazilians uh, and their experiences of being black in Brazil. So the first comment. We go through this every day. I'm an engineer. And once I was in the office with just men and a white secretary, the office boy passed the secretary, passed the men and came to me. In other words, only I could be the secretary in that environment. So I said to him, the secretary is up front. So they're speaking to the stereotype of what position black Brazilians will hold in society. You know, we'll get to this later where if a black man has on a suit and he's in a mall, he must be the security guard because security guards in Brazilian malls, they wear they wear suits and ties. Uh, if it's a white man, he must be the CEO of a bank. But this is, again, how race plays out in Brazil. So if it's a black person working in a certain agency, this person must work in this position because clearly they're not going to be one of the top positions. They're going to be just the secretary or the maid. That's that's what that comment is saying. The second comment says. My 10 year old son experienced racism at school when another child told me he couldn't go to his house to play because he was black. Glory be to God that here at home, we talked a lot with him about racism. And at the same time, the, re the rest of his class classmates reacted with companionship and affection and went straight to the principal to talk about what had happened. The third comment says, hey, black man, I've sold, among other things, beer and water at festive events. I always felt a look of contempt. When I became a lawyer, I ran into an acquaintance who hadn't seen me in a long time. I was wearing a suit and tie. And at the time, my acquaintance, who had no idea that I had became a lawyer, said, congratulations. I'm glad to see you converted to the Lord. An excellent, excellent decision. So this is speaking to what I just said. The, an old acquaintance who hadn't seen him in a while since he had become a lawyer, saw him in a suit and tie. Just automatically, he, he was going to an evangelical church or something. You, you, you know, you've dedicated your life to the Lord. So automatically, what are black Brazilians perceived to be? This says VDD, which means verdade, means true. I remember that once my black teacher called me a monkey in front of the whole class. 
I remember everything as if it were today, the shame, the feeling that stays with you for the rest of your life. Nothing and no one can measure what feeling marks you for life. Of course, today, this has been overcome, but not forgotten. Now, listen to what he just said. He said a black teacher called him a monkey. I've talked at length both on the blog and on the YouTube channel about how Brazilians love to call black people monkeys. There was actually, and I'm going to do a story about this coming up, hopefully soon. The current season of uh, Big Brother Brazil, there's been an incident where one of the black males on the program referred to a black woman as a monkey. The black woman checked him like, how are you going to call me a monkey on TV, knowing how ugly that phrase is and how people who are not black call us this term? You know, like the following week, he did it again. He called he referred to black women as monkeys. That's a story I have to cover soon. But this is, you know, what is this saying here? Again, when black people take on the the image of other blacks that non-black people have, you know, how does it make you feel when you hear a racial insult coming from somebody who looks like you? Number five, I live in Copacabana. And whenever I talk to people, they always ask, what favela do you live in? And that bothers me a lot. The problem isn't living in a community, which a lot of people call the favela now. They call it a community. You know, favelas are the lower class uh, um, homes that people build, often in the hills surrounding large cities. The problem is that people are incapable of imagining a black person in any other reality than that. So he spoke on Copacabana. If anybody's been to Rio, I'm sure you've heard of Copacabana. It's a very famous, uh, like, ritzy neighborhood in Rio de Janeiro. It's known for its famous beaches, but very, you know, very expensive region of Brazil. Now, for those of you who have never heard of a favela, the favelas are, you know, these uh, these makeshift type of homes that people build on the hills in large cities of Brazil. And they, like, surround the what they call the asphalt area, you know, the uh, the area that's more that's lower in the city. That's, you know, just, you know, other we could say like noble or upper crust neighborhoods or just, you know, even lower middle class neighborhoods. Generally, people who are associated with living in a favela, they you know, people of, you know, low buying power, we would say you go to any Brazilian city and look up in the hills and you'll see favelas of, you know, poor people. OK. So people automatically assume he's black. He must live in a favela. OK, um, comment six. This is still part of our daily routines. I've been a lawyer for 24 years and on the street of my condominium where I walk my four dogs, they ask the price of the training. Just one example of the millions of other cases. So he's saying people see him walking his dog. He must be working for somebody who's doing dog training. He's training some rich guys dogs. He couldn't be the resident, you know, in a, a nice neighborhood in a nice apartment. He must be working for the guy whose dogs that he is walking. That's what that's saying. Number seven, I had trainees at an institution where I worked and they were never asked for a badge. It wasn't until I had a black trainee that they started wanting the trainees to have badges because, quote, we don't know who's who's who in this place. I had to hear that from an employee. So. What he's saying, white employees come in, you don't even need a badge. But as soon as a black person starts working there, okay, we need everybody to wear a badge. Almost like, who's this suspect that's coming up in here? Number eight, recurring in schools all over the country, sad and revolting, but it's reality. And when there are teachers who repudiate this kind of behavior, often their prof professional colleagues say that we are exaggerating and the management dismisses the teacher's attitude. They treat it as an isolated case or child's play, but it's not. As the child himself says, it's not just the pupil who attacks him, but everyone who laughs at him or who laughs at it. Nine, I'm an English teacher. And for a long time, I worked in Baja, Ta, Baja da Tijuca. In the first few months, the suspicious looks were constant. Things have changed since then, but it's almost impossible to, ex to escape these reactions. So he mentioned another neighborhood here, Baja da Tijuca, another it's an upper class neighborhood in the West zone of Rio de Janeiro. So again, you know, what's this black guy doing in this neighborhood? <laughs> uh, let me see, where are we now? Number 10, in an internship at the bank where I worked, I was the only black person in the marketing department. In many places, I realized that there are no black people, only those who serve others. I mean, it just goes on and on. Um, 
so right now I'm going to take a break in the action. I'm going to end the video here and I'll come back for part two of this video. Hopefully you're following along. Um, like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell. Um, I'm going to invite you to come all come back and check out part two of this video when I post it.